Welcome back friends. In case you didn't notice, subject of this video is blades for backpacking. Not blades for car camping, bushwhacking, zombie killing, bushcraft, or self-defense tactical stuff. Backpacking, which means weight and function are the critical items we're going to talk about. Let's take a look at a few knives that I've used that won't weigh your pack down or break the bank. Most ultralight backpackers and through hikers can get away with nothing more than, you know, like a pair of nail clippers and, and that's cool if it works for them but I'm a guy that likes knives and for those of us that feel better about carrying a knife there's a ton of options out there so first let's talk about some folding knives I always 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 have a Victorinox classic SD in my pocket and I have since the mid 80s they're awesome and many through hikers carry nothing more than this it's extremely versatile you get a blade Got some scissors, nail file, and tweezers, and a toothpick. This model knife has been in my pocket every day that I'm not on an airplane or mm, maybe in the water or something. And when I lost my original one a few years back, I was sick and I immediately replaced it with this one. Looks just like it. These things only weigh 21 grams and you can get them for anywhere from 10 to 12 bucks. Now I kind of collect these two as well. There's a million varieties. It's kind of like Zippo lighters or something. Hey, here's one for, hey, if you're a hiker, there's your tennis shoe. But sometimes when I'm drunk eBaying at night, I go buy a few of these or maybe seven or eight, keep them around, hand them out to stocking stuffers for Christmas and things like that. They're just kind of cool to have, but you know, a lot of fun there too. The next one, is my Spider Co native. This particular blade design I don't think is available any longer. And this actually was my very first Spider Co knife. This one is usually clipped on my right pocket when I hike because it is very light. It's a great knife, great blade design, three and a eighth inches long. You got your S35 NV steel and it is made in USA. Golden Colorado Earth it says so right there. It's going to be about 2.6 ounces. Kind of pricey. The uh, the Spider Co. Four and Fives are. I can't get this to stand up. They're about 80, 85 bucks. So might be more than you want to spend for something to take out on the trail. The next one's going to be the Ontario Rat Two which stands for Randall's Adventure Training, the RAT-2. Well-known little budget blade. Everybody knows about the Randall knives out in the knife community. It's an open pillar design. You'll get a full flat grind, three inch OS-8 steel blade with G10 handles. It's a cool little pocket knife, open pillar design, so you can clean it out real easy. This thing's gonna run you about uh, 25 30 bucks only weighs 2.8 ounces and if you want something a little bit bigger they also have the rat one for 35 bucks but uh, you won't even know this one's in your pocket and if you lose it no biggie the next one is the Elan ELO2B this is a great little Chinese knife these guys have a whole line of really cool knives and for 17 bucks you can't beat it Another open pillar design. Feels really great in your hand. It's a, it's a robust knife. It's eight and a quarter inches overall, and it's got a 4.1 inch 8CR13 MOB blade, and I like this really cool stone wash finish. It's got an axis lock. Well, I'm not a big fav uh, fan of the axis lock knives uh, like Benchmade uses, and I don't own a, any Benchmade knives. But uh, if that floats your boat, you might be looking at this. It's got G10 handles, excellent grip. Got some nice ramping here. You got left, uh, you got thumb stud on either side. So for you lefties, you're good to go. And all for 14 to $17. It's, it's just insane you can get a knife of this quality for that kind of price. And you'd think it would really be a porker, but it's not too bad. 4.7 ounces. So I've used this in quite a bit. I don't think you can really go wrong with 
any of the Elan knives. Check them out, they got a whole ton of them. Now the next one is gonna be the K-Bar Dozer Folding Hunter. I stumbled on this by accident, and man, I'm really glad I did. Just an awesome lightweight folder, lock back design, and I think this is gonna be a great little knife for backpacking. And as much as I like my Spyderco native, I think this is my new girlfriend right here. This is a collaboration between K-Bar and Bob Dozer, who's a well-known knife designer. And I think this thing is gonna be great for slicing and uh, just about any kind of camp kitchen work. Seven and a quarter inches overall. You got a three inch OS8 steel blade. And the Zytel handles come in a variety of cool colors. It's got really nice, it's nice and grippy. And there's some other blade shapes out there. So I'm gonna, one night when I'm drunk eBaying, I might pick out some other ones. But I, I, I saw this blue and I said, I gotta have that. 2.0, oh, no, I'm sorry, 2.2 ounces. And it's gonna cost you about 20 bucks with free shipping from Amazon. I think this is an excellent compromise of price, weight, and functionality right there so that's your folders and there's tons of inexpensive folding knives out there that are both lightweight and inexpensive Kershaw has a ton of them and uh, they're all well-built inexpensive knives and Walmart has several including the uh, ones like the Kershaw oh so sweet the leak the other ones and you can start at about 16 to 27 28 bucks at Walmart and uh, find you some decent knives I've noticed they've also started carrying uh, even some of the inexpensive spider coats too. So don't forget to check out Wally World if you're if you're looking for an inexpensive folder. You don't need to go to the gun show and and uh, pay out the nose through a dealer there. Okay, one thing. Let's get it out of the way. What about multi tools? I know someone's going to mention this, so let's just get it over with. The answer is no. No, you just don't need one. I just think they're a waste of weight and space. But, of course, that's just my opinion. And unless your name is MacGyver, I just don't think you need one. Now, this is a Leatherman Wingman. This is not a, a real expensive Leatherman. It is well made, though, made in the United States. But it's not lightweight. This thing weighs seven ounces. It's a boat anchor, and that's without the sheath. But if you really think you have to carry a multi-tool, let me show you something that'll, I think, work for you. This is the... Leatherman Squirt. I carry this one all the time. This is the PS2 version. They make several different flavors of this thing. And I think it's super versatile for backpacking. Um, I, I EDC this one all the time. And it only weighs 1.9 ounces and it's about 30 bucks. Extremely well made. Got your pliers, you got a file, you got a nice little blade there. Scissors, I like me some scissors. Then you got another little uh, kind of flathead screwdriver there. Let me fold this one up and let you take a quick look at it just to show you how small it is. See if I can do it without killing myself. There you are. So it's really small, and uh, sometimes I just carry it as my EDC and uh, play with it all day, a lot of fun. Love me my little, my little squirt. What about fixed blades? Do you really need a fixed blade for backpacking? Well, that's entirely up to you, but if you feel you have to carry one of those giant Becker BK7s that weigh about a pound on your backpacking trip and then gripe about the weight of your pack, you might need to reevaluate your priorities. But here's some good options that won't drain the bank account or weigh down the pack very much. Now I have always thrown one of these Mora Companions in my pack. They're made in Sweden. They're super lightweight, 3.9 ounces. That includes the sheath, sharp as a razor, and you're talking about 14, 15 bucks. There's several models and colors available, so pick one out that speaks to you. Nice handle, nice grip, it's great. It's high-vis for me because, you know, I'm old and I can't find it when I lay it down in the dirt or the leaves, so 
I've got a green one too, but they're pretty cool. The steel is carbon, so there's a bit of maintenance involved in this, but nothing too big. It is not full tang, which means the metal doesn't come all the way through the handle. But that's okay, that keeps the weight and the price down. It comes with a lightweight plastic sheath. Looks like this. It's a drain hole in the bottom, has excellent retention. And uh, all in all, it's just a really great little knife. It's light enough you can mount on a shoulder strap and thin enough to where you won't even notice it's there. Now these aren't choppers and uh, you're not gonna be doing any batoning or heavy duty bushcraft work with the more companion. But for basic cutting, camp kitchen chores, uh, processing small game or fish, they're awesome. And if you lose it, hey, no big deal. But it's hard to beat one of these knives for the price, which brings us to this one. This is the Mora Bushcraft Black. Now this is Mora's entry into the bushcraft world, also made in feed and ya. Carbon steel. A little heavier duty knife than our little $15 job over there. It comes with a thicker blade, so if you want to do a little batoning or wood processing. It's got a 90 degree spine also, so if you need to use it to strike your fire steel. And hey, you can use this for self-defense too if you see a zombie or some inbred wanting to know why you're hiking around his marijuana grow. So anyway, cool knife. You never know what you're going to come up, come against out there. Looking at about 5.6 ounces on this one and that includes the sheath so the pay, you know, the weight penalty for me just isn't that big an issue. This thing's going to run you about 38 to 40 bucks and for you guys that lean a little more towards bushcraft knives, you can get an optional sheath which has a built-in fire steel and sharpening stone for about uh, another 15 bucks. This knife is getting to be very, very popular. Oh man, I'm knocking stuff over. Stop that. Now here's a knife that never ever gets mentioned anywhere for any reason, but I really like it, and that's called the Martini Big, Big Game Condor. Another Scandinavian knife made in Finland, and since I'm Finnish, I'm kind of partial to this knife. It is a beautiful piece. It really is. 30 bucks for this knife, and man, it, it just feels great. Got a 5.1 inch stainless steel blade and a grippy rubberized handle. Weighs 7.2 ounces, and it comes with a nice leather sheath, like this one right here. You don't really get that for 30 bucks. So, saw it at the gun shows, and I gotta have that, you know, can't have too many knives. But another great knife for light bushcraft work, small game processing, and eh, just your basic camp chores. So just remember that, you know, a knife is a tool and find one or two that really fulfill your needs. If you're doing nothing more than slicing a beef stick, you know, cheese or cutting some guy lines, you just don't need a whole lot. But you know, if you're making tent steaks or doing minor bushcrafting, get something a little more robust. And then again, if you're scared of the zombie apocalypse or psycho marmots, you might want to get something like this here, my SA6, my favorite fixed blade knife. So what's my system? Well, like I said, always, always, always carry my Victorinox Classic SD in my left pocket. And I'm going to swap out my Spyderco Native for my new K-Bar Dozer Hunter. I think that's going to be pretty cool. And I'm always going to have one of the Moras on my backpack. Probably be carrying the Bushcraft Black just because I think it's a little more versatile, but you know, I think it'll be okay. Overkill, yeah, maybe, but it makes me feel good about myself and you know, maybe I won't carry the Mora all the time, just depends on the trip, but I like knives and I'm willing to make some sacrifices. So uh, if I carry a fixed blade, you know, so be it. You gotta give me some credit, you know, I, I used to carry a damn pistol, so just gonna go with the knife now. 
So I hope this helps you out, gives you some options and decisions to uh, help you make a, a good knife choice for your backpacking trip. Love to see your comments below. Got any questions, just let me know. If you like what you see, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button too. So until next time, I hope you guys have a great day and I hope to see you out on the trail. Adios.